Hey, it's Jake from Mido, and I'm going to show you the simplest way to do some web scraping in Python. The first thing we're going to do is import these packages here, which is what we'll be using. Then we're going to set this variable equal to the pd.readHTML function, which is a, a, a pandas function. And all we're going to do as a parameter here is pass in the URL for the web page we're trying to scrape. In my example here, I'm looking at some NBA data, some finals appearances for different NBA teams. So I will go back here. And now that we've passed in the URL that we're looking at, the first thing we can do is just see how many tables there are on that page. So using this function and passing in our variable name here, table MBA, we get an output that there are 27 possible tables to scrape on this page. So what I want to do is I want to narrow that down to the tables that have the title that I'm looking for. So I'm looking for finals appearances is the title of the table so I'm looking for. So I'm going to do a read HTML function again, but use this match parameter and put in the title of my table. When I output that, I see there are only two tables that match there, so it's great. I've really narrowed down the tables I can look at. And then all I'm going to do is create a data frame with table MBA and the number of the table that I want. In this case, it's one, which is the second table. Since we're starting from zero, it goes zero, one. So this is the second table. And then I'm creating that data frame on that second table. And I'm just going to uh, create, uh, generate that data frame here. And here's our data frame made from data from this web page. All right, so I was going kind of fast there just to sort of show you how easy it is to use this function, uh, this functionality in, in, in Pandas and these packages to web scrape, but I'll break it down a little bit here and go a little slower. So these packages, um, we're gonna need to install these first before we import them. So you can either do that in your terminal or you can do that in the actual notebook itself. If you're gonna do it in the notebook, one example is Pandas. So you'd have to pip install uh, Pandas. First, this would be the command in your terminal, but because we're doing it in the notebook, we need to put an exclamation there. So when we do that, we'll see I already have the uh, satisfied requirement, so it's not going to do anything. But that's how you would do it for any of these packages. Let me just delete this. And so now what we're doing here is we're setting this variable equal to the function pd.readHTML, which is a pandas function. And again, we're just passing in the URL of the website that we're trying to scrape. The really nice thing here that I definitely want to emphasize is this read HTML function does sort of all the searching for the tables for you. In other systems or other using other packages, using other techniques to web scrape, web scrape, there's a lot of work that goes into looking at the page, looking at the HTML of that page, and finding the actual data that you want to scrape, finding the data that makes sense to either to scrape tabularly or scraping text as strings. Is, is also an option, but in this simple example, we want tabular data. So the read HTML function looks for all the data tables for you, which is really, really great. Um, here again, what we were doing is we're just getting the list of how many tables there are. And you know, on these pages, there can be lots of different tables, as you can see. There's some more examples by the top, maybe. No, just the two, those two, I guess. But you know, lots of web pages can have lots of tables. So this this uh, this function here, the output here, will tell us, once we pass in our variable name, um, how many tables there are, which can be really helpful for deciding if we want to do this next step, which is this matching process. So one of the arguments to the read HTML function in Pandas is this match um, argument here. And what I, what I did is I just passed in the name of the table that I was looking for. So my table was here. It's called finals appearances. You know, we're just going to use the title that is most you kind of have to use a little bit of intuition here, but it's the title that is most closely associated with the table you're looking at. So finals appearances. And I'm just going to pass it in as the argument here for this read HTML function. And what the output of that is two. So it tells us there are two tables in this um, in this web page that would sort of match or fit this match that we're doing. And then I just can just toggle here between zero and one, because obviously numbers here start with zero. So we have zero, one are the first and second tables. Um, and I found out that it was one, which was the, the table that I was looking for. So I'm just gonna run that. And again, here is our data frame. This is a normal pandas data frame that we can use um, you know, in any way that you would a, a normal data frame. So we've gone over the easiest way to web scrape. And now quickly, I'll just show you how you can use Mito to actually analyze that data. And what we believe, of course, biasly, because we made Mito, 
um, what the easiest way to clean, analyze, and wrangle your data is. So we have this data frame that we created here. And now to pass this in the Mito, all I'm going to do is import Mito Sheet. Uh, you'll have to install the Mito package first, which I'll link the description, the, the instructions in the description below. And then I'm going to run MitoSheet.Sheet with our data frame as the argument. And we'll see that the data frame populates this interactive spreadsheet inside of the Jupyter environment. Um, in this data, we can see we have the win, the amount of games won and lost for each of these teams in the final. So this is every finals game they've played in. And we have these win percentages. Let's say we want to sort these percentages um, in descending order. So here we have at the top, we have the Chicago Bulls have the best winning percentage in the finals. And then every team subsequently below in descending order. And the nice thing about Mito is it's going to generate the code for that sort we did. So we just did a descending sort and Mito is going to generate that code for us. So every edit we do in the Mito sheet here is going to generate the equivalent code. So if I were to do a filter, or if I were to do a pivot table, or I were to merge something, every edit we would do here visually in a point and click way would generate the equivalent code below. And the last thing I'll show you is, let's just say we want to graph these values here. So I have the teams, and then I have the, um, let's say we want to look at the uh, win percentages here. Here we go. Here's a graph of all the teams in the NBA and their win percentages in the finals.